In this video, Trey's going to have why is copper called Dr. Copper and some of the ways we can get exposure to it. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a warm welcome to you. So we know about gold, we know about silver, but copper is a little bit of an unknown one. It's very, very usable, i.e. a lot of businesses actually use copper as opposed to gold and silver, nevertheless, but gold, uh, where it's more of a store of value, it's more potentially seen as a safe haven in some people's eyes, that kind of stuff. There are some industrial uses for it, but it's more other supply demand from that perspective of how they perceive the value of it as opposed to I need it because I'm gonna do this with it. Whereas copper is very much a metal that is used in industry, in electrical industry, in multiple businesses. And this is why it's called Dr. Copper because generally speaking, people say, or it's been said that it's got a PhD in economics because it can tell when the economy is booming or about to bust or it's about to turn. It can spot the cycles in the economy. Why? Because people are consuming copper. They're taking it, buying it in raw material format and they're making it into whatever they're making it into. Perhaps they're winding it into their electric motors, very, very conductive, very malleable, very easy. Uh, maybe they're putting it into roofs, maybe they're putting it into piping. It's got so many uses that it kind of has a knock-on effect that if you're consuming a lot of copper, you're buying a lot of copper, then you're going to be having a lot of orders for your factory and the economy, you're going to be employing a lot of people. Those people who are buying those orders are going to be employing people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. So the theory is when copper prices are rising, it means there's a lot of demand from factories, from consumers. Well, not obviously not an end consumer. No end consumer buys a big slab of copper, but a factory, a manufacturer who's buying a lot of copper, all those people are driving up the price of copper. And the assumption is that if that's happening, there's gonna be back-end productivity and back-end growth in the economy. However, when these people are not ordering as much copper, when they're delaying orders, when they're like, you know, I don't really need as much now, it means that the flow, the pipeline of the orders that they've got from the consumer end, I keep calling it consumer end, but you get the point from that end after the processing is reduced. It potentially means that if that's extrapolated out over multiple businesses, then there's gonna be a problem with the economy. So that's why it's called Dr. Copper. That's the theory behind it anyway. Uh, and generally speaking, there's been some studies that's shown that it's actually reasonably true. Now, I wouldn't go and say, oh, well, copper's down today, let's go you know, long, uh, short the economy. But there tends to be some cycles that prove that when copper starts to turn downwards, we later see in decline in factory orders, decline in, in some of the indicators, the economic indicators that we look at to, to see growth. Uh, there's a little bit of a delay, of course, but it can be quite useful. So how's it split and how's it used? Well, approximately 65% is used for electrical, like I said earlier, things like motors, electric motors, you may have seen if you've taken apart an electric motor the whole wire that goes around the motor uh, is generally copper because it's relatively conductive. It's not as expensive as gold per pound. Uh, it's relatively malleable and it's used in a lot of electrical components like that. And actually something to think about is this, as we kind of move forward with electric cars, etc., uh, will the increase in copper usage be uh, something that happens or will these a different metal or how will it work? So that's something maybe to think about, just going off track there. Uh, so it's 65% of the electrical. We've got 25% industrial. That's uh, reasonably uh, easy to, to put into shape. That's like malleable. So a lot of industrial applications, occasionally you might get it on roofs, you might get it into guttering, things like that. 10% um, use of transportation and others. So Many, many, many uses. It's actually a useful metal that people are using and turning it into something else that they're selling. So this is why it is such a barometer on the economy. Let's have a look at how we could trade it. And of course, we could trade it via a spread better or CFD, but we can also trade it on a futures contract. A futures contract, the code for that is HG. One contract is 25,000 pounds of copper, pounds in the weight. One tick is 0 0.005 per pound. So that's the minimum amount that copper can move when it's trading. Uh, and that's worth $12.50. If I have one contract, one tick moves $12.50. Just to give you an idea of the kind of range this thing at the moment, the range yesterday when I did this video, and it's about the same, has been, copper's been in about the same range for the last four years or so. Anyway, up and down, not really done much, not really gone crazy. Volatile. So the range is about 0.6. So it's around a give or take, it's 0.6, 0.5, around 100 ticks range in a day. So that gives you an idea of, of what we're talking there. Uh, ETFs wise, uh, JJC and CPER, 
To be honest, guys, I wouldn't even bother with those. The volume's low. There's no, there's hardly any liquidity. It's one of those things that you know they haven't got much assets in the management. It's, it's, it's not really worth looking at. Perhaps you could use it as a proxy if you haven't got access to the futures contract to see what Copper's doing. But if you want to, if, if you want to get delayed, you're okay going on finvis.com, checking the futures tab, and then looking at it there. Um, so I generally, would steer clear of those ETFs unless there's a specific reason you want to. Uh, Spread bet CFD is a great way of doing it or using the futures contract HG. A lot of liquidity in that. And it does move, it's got a nice clean chart so you can do your analysis on that. So anyway guys, uh, why is Copper's called Dr. Copper? Might be worth looking at. It's like I say, it's just stagnated a little bit for the past you know, multiple years, not really done a lot. Maybe we'll break out one way or another. Who knows, but it's interesting. It's one of those ones that's worth having on the watch list. If you're watching silver, you're watching gold, you may as well be watching copper as well. Anyway, guys, take care. See you next one. Bye-bye.